Dave Schiff and Alex Bernard with me. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I remember when I was a kid and, uh, and I'd watch TV and I was always, I don't know, like as an adult, I've never been very anxious, but I was a really anxious child. And, um, and, uh, and there was something that, uh, a show I used to watch, Mr. Rogers, and Mr. Rogers, you know, would come in and he would, he would have a jacket on. You recall, you're old enough to recall. Yes. He would have a jacket on and he would, out. and he would change out of the jacket. He'd change out of his work shoes. Remember that? Had the cardigan. And it brought me so much comfort. I don't know why, but I don't know if you had the same feeling. Like I just got really comfortable with the fact that, you know, he had changed out of like his work thing. He never took and got on into casual. a more casual. And got into a casual thing. So, Did he you know, ever expose his feet? I mean, I, and he, well, he wouldn't expose his feet, but it was a different era, you know? Okay. He would put on sneakers, and he'd, that always was weird to me, though. It's like, you just took off these shoes, and then you yeah. put on, and now you're lacing up another shoe. I wasn't comfortable with that, so, you know, I thought maybe like a flip-flop, go a little more casual. But if you, if you're Mr. Rogers, wouldn't that make us hand puppets? You are the, the king, maybe? <laughs> we've yeah. Been, we've been hand The little train? Like we've years. been reduced to hand the little puppets train? via your analogy. <laughs> So I just that thanks. That was bound to happen. But do you feel comforted by my wardrobe change? Well, I, I do feel comforted, and Good. I but I also feel like as as now the equivalent of a hand puppet. I don't really have to bring it today. You know what I mean? Like I could fail miserably. You could just move your mouth, and he could talk for you. <laughs> so Dave, Dave Schiff. A um, couple things about Dave Schiff, if you don't know. Um, I first met Dave when he was. Uh, a writer at Schwinn, and he and uh, he would write copy for catalogs, I guess, at yeah. Schwinn, and and um, and he'd also write the Schwinn newsletter, and uh, and we we used to read it at the agency, and it was just like the funniest thing we'd ever seen, and and eventually Sh- uh, Schwinn kind of fell apart, yeah. and uh, and it, it got bought by a big company, and it wasn't the cool thing that it was for a while. It was a really cool thing for a while, and. Uh, and, and Dave's boss called me and he said, you should hire Dave. And I said, you know, I thought, well, yeah, that guy's great. I'll, I'll offer him a job. The first time I ever met, you didn't have that many tattoos. You had a few tattoos on. Yeah, yeah. Had just started the tattooing. And, um, and he apparently also, the rumor was he also had a, a, a piercing in his penis. And I remember our, our senior account woman is this okay to talk about? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't in the pre-show notes. <laughs> no. no but it, it I actually, out if you, there if you, like a if you were ago, checking like, your Twitter, I, I did tweet that I would okay. ask. The, about the, the, our senior account woman asked to see it. I don't know yes. if you recall that. I, I do recall. And I don't remember I, what happened. Uh, I produced it. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I didn't really consider myself on any sort of career path. And the possibility of working with you guys yeah. didn't seem... Realistic, so and that I thought, how's this going to hurt my career? Right, right. And so, yeah. So, so, so we did that, and it didn't, it didn't, uh, didn't hurt his career. I don't want to say who the woman is, but she's still here. She's one of our most senior people, um, and she loves Dave. So apparently, it was fine. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the next thing that happened is I offered him a job, and and Dave, you know, he knew a little bit about advertising. He knew that aver- you know hardcore real advertising happens in New York so he was you know kind of laughed at me and said I don't think I'm coming to Miami to work in advertising I've got this offer in New York so he went to New York and uh and while he was there and we won't name like agencies but he's there and and he and he told the story that Crispin had offered him a job people were mortified (laughs) they were Um, like yeah what's wrong with you? Do you understand what you've passed up? And I had no idea and I felt really bad and then I was forced to get in contact with you. But it was much later, then yes. maybe a year later or so. I thought advertising yeah. was like um, a plumber where there's a good one in every town. I'm not kidding. Then I thought, well, the best ones must be in New York. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so I went there. I was completely ignorant of, of the industry and still am to a large extent. Um, and you don't, I don't think you learn much about uh, traditional advertising or even uh, other agencies when you're here because this place is weird but yeah, yeah I was clueless yeah but eventually we got Dave in and and he's uh he's creative director on on Coke Zero and he and he just got back from doing this thing that we called Shocking Barack and we're going to talk a bunch about that today um Dave's partner is Alex Bernard and Alex has been at the agency a long time um we call him Bernie I tend to call him Bernie. He was the first other Alex. We were pretty small when, when Bernie showed up. 
He was the first other Alex, and it seemed like to me that we couldn't have another one. And well, I think the quote was that your neck hurt. Then my what? Your neck hurt. Just when, the whenever idea Whenever somebody of it? would call Alex, you would uh, turn around and your neck was starting to hurt. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, so Bill, Bill Wright came up with the, the moniker Bernie, and so he goes by Bernie Bernard, which I think is a great name, and I've, for years I've said, make that your real name. Just change yeah. your name. And he's not interested in it at well, all. The mascot in Miami was Bernie. Yeah. And that, but it's become that's his true. name. But I'm I starting mean, to look at But like I mean, we mascot. call him Bernie. No one knows, no one knows that his name's yeah. Alex. Yeah. 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 But, on a, but on award shows and stuff, he'll put Alex Bernard still, which I just, it makes no sense to me. No. No. Bernie Bernard, cool name. Right? It shows the rippling effect that you have a mild pain in your neck and then a guy has to switch his whole identity. Well, is what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's not like that, really. I just suggested and then yeah. other people Su- came up with suggest- a name so suggested. good that it stuck. So um, I, wanted, I wanted to do a couple things. Um, X Biscuit, Chris Preston um, said, uh, wrote in, Bogusky's live shows are kind of like a mini train wreck. Um, and, and, you know, it's a hard thing doing these live shows, Chris. It's, it's, and, and I, you know, Mini Train Wreck was one of the ideas for the show name originally. Awkward Silence was another name that we, <laughs> that we considered. But, um, but, you know, one man's Mini Train Wreck is another man's quirky, awkward style. Right? Um, I, I'm still thinking about the invite to be on the show. The Train Wreck comment never came up. So it's like... I don't mention it to people <laughs> right, who I right. want to have on. Yeah. Right. Because so that like, tends to make people not want to come on. And that's why we didn't go with awkward silence or mini right. train wreck. You want to be in the club car for a huge train wreck. Don't want it to. Happens in no, no, <laughs> mini train wreck. Okay, right. It's not that bad. Not a, a huge thing. train wreck would actually be more entertaining, I think. I think mini is kind of more of a slam. A um, couple other orders of business. Just a shout out to Conrad. We're sending good energy to you and, and hope you continue to get, get well. And um, Juniper Music sent us a bunch, like nine pieces of music for a show intro. So we're collecting that stuff and some of it's really funny so so thanks thanks for that and hopefully if we can figure out the technology we'll have intro music and interstitials and stuff wow yeah kind of kind of create like i don't want to get up going but it'll be fun so um so probably we should start with a question we got more questions this week than than we have ever gotten prior to the show so that's that's been great um and and i've got some pictures of dave as well you know if you watch if you've you know, watch Shocking Barack at all, there was, there was a lot of this on the <laughs> site. Um, and, and a lot of people thought this helmet made, made quite a statement. And I w- thought maybe you can tell us about this helmet. I think people will be surprised. Well, it's, it's new old stock. It's a helmet that I've owned for years and years. That's, for I think, years. the surprising part. He owns the helmet. Yeah, he I've, owned it prior to the production. I've actually owned it for almost eight years. And it's new old stock, so it's from the 70s. And it was refurbished, but I've always thought that they say that helmets dry out. The foam inside them dry out over time, so you have to replace them. So if I were to be in a collision, I think it would just look like someone smashed two erasers it's together. Not a, it's not a real <laughs> yeah, helmet. No, it's no. not a real helmet. So, yes, it's just, uh, I thought it looked cool. You were going to sport that. Oh. Dave is also the creative director for um, Coke Zero. Can we get a zoom in? You might yeah. want to push in on this product. Yeah. It's our first product placement moment. I'm going to try that again. And, um, zoomed in now. <sighs> And, and uh, Coke Zero has actually paid for this product, product placement. Um, and I think it was like $20. So we did. We received $20 from the Coke Zero client. It's the first ever, I believe, it is monetization yeah. of this program. I've got a delicious beverage. I'm not being paid. So, but it's, I, could, I could easily drink it out of, uh, out of the package rather than out of this, this mug. Um, we can make that happen. So one of the questions we got was, what was, going, um, what was it like doing live advertising with a relatively new client, and were there any don't ask, don't tell moments that occurred? Should we say what the thing is first? Shocking Barack? Yeah. Sure. I don't know if anyone... Shocking Barack was where, where um, Dave and um, Brian... What's Brian's last name? Wisman. Wisman. Brian Wisman, the engineer for Brammo, rode across country and... and uh, or from Detroit, and they retraced the, the path of the auto executives that they took in their private jets uh, in, attempt, in an attempt to um, give a Bramo inertia power cycle to uh, President Obama. And that was, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't have any budget. 
and um, Bernie was in the crew. Dave was on a motorcycle. Dave's ridden for a long time, um, and um, and it was kind of a fun. It was kind of a fun adventure, and, and we learned a lot along the way. Yes, and to answer your question, um, what was it like advertising this way? I think it was a lot more difficult for the people on the back end of the process, like the lawyers and the producers and anybody that was trying to sort of cross their T's and dot their I's and get releases when we needed them because and editors. it was just on. I mean, yeah. what was happening was being broadcast very shortly after it happened, and at no time were we trying to adjust because we, we never knew what situations we would be in. So, there, But there was, there was a moment, right, when... when um, and this was kind of a don't ask, don't tell moment. I thought when um, one of the bikes broke down. Oh yeah, and, for sure. And, and you know, we really were saying to ourselves, do we make this transparent, or what do we what do we do with this? And the decision was, yeah, we got to make it transparent. Yeah, one of the uh, there's a thing called a, a motor controller that tells the electric motor what to do on a bike, and it's a very cool piece of electronic equipment. And that thing broke, and it, you're exactly right. We thought. Our first thought was, okay, how do we sweep this under the carpet? And then that just didn't feel cool. It didn't feel like what we had done with anything else. And then it's, it was, okay, it needs to be part of the story. Yeah. And the great thing was the client. I mean, you have, here you have a problem with the product, and it's a problem that was easily solved. But these guys are lifting it up and saying, hey, and making it part of the story. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. rather than I, thought, I thought the other thing that was really cool that, was, that happened over the trip that, was, that I didn't expect was that the the engineers started doing things to the bikes because it was it was really more R and D. I mean, the trip became more R and D because the bikes are commuter bikes, and we were using them in a different way. Yeah, and they were learning stuff. That part was crazy. Anybody that knows anything about motorcycles or automotive technology, they were making changes during the trip, um, optimizing the bikes just by plugging a laptop in, and you'd see a progress bar go across, and it was as though you had a new camshaft and a new exhaust system. It was that yeah. big of a difference yeah. in performance. Yeah. So that was crazy. And it's stuff that they're bringing forward, though, into the production bikes, like, which is really Almost cool. instantly. It's neat that the, when the marketing and the R&D become one thing, yep. I, I was really excited about that. I also thought it was cool. Like, you hear electric vehicles, it's, it's a compromise, and you're always apologizing for stuff. Yeah. It seems like for them to be successful, it has to just be better and cooler. And this yeah. was an instance where you can't do that with with yeah. a, a, a normal automotive. Yeah. I product. mean, you see those guys that hack into their cars, I yeah. guess, with laptops and stuff. But it's but it's not a normal thing. You'd right? have to rebuild stuff, remanufacture yeah. stuff. So yeah. it actually is cooler than normal yeah. transport. Um, the. Uh, I'm trying to remember, and I've seen Colbert. Letterman. That was a good awkward silent moment. Actually. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. just going to say, of all the times I've seen like Colbert or um, Letterman or Leno, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember yeah. parts of the show where there's a 90 <laughs> second stop? silence yeah. while they look at a list of questions, and I'm drawing a blank. I don't can't, know. Can't think of it. <laughs> <If> you, <laughs> um, someone tweeted in, "Can we still ask questions live?" And yes, we can. Um, yes, we can. You can. I guess we can't because we're here. Did your butts hurt? came from EVMC2, which is a guy who's actually doing a cross-country ride. So I think this is important for him to know. Great. Um, that's a great road trip question for motorcycles. Normally, you would say yes. That would be the thing that determined when you stopped riding. But, you know, these things would go about 50 miles a charge. Yeah. And you're going about 50 miles an hour. So you're only on the bike for an hour. So no, our butts did not hurt, although yeah. we rode through cold and rain and horrible conditions. I mean, and it was so bad weather. It was bad news. It was bad, it was bad weather. So, so... As you went, this was a, this is a really good question. I thought um, you went through a lot of states, and a lot of the states, you know, red straight, red states, all different color states, blue, blue and red, purple, yes. all the colors. And then, and, and and the question is, did you run into skeptics or resentment for the for the idea of a green bike? Like when we had. Our whole, our whole route was basically determined by people and by how far we could go. But when we were looking at the general direction we were going in, we realized we were going to go through the Rust Belt towns where yeah. they've been hit hard by you know, traditional automotive products not doing Failures, well. Failures, yeah. And so we could potentially get the shit kicked out of us is what we were thinking. Yeah. And, I was and they're, for, bi they're big dudes. They're big. Potentially they're, pissed. Yeah, yeah, they're big, unemployed. Yeah. They're mad. Things. And, and uh, so we actually thought <laughs> that might happen. I couldn't believe what happened was the opposite, you know. Nobody thought um, green technology is a thing that set us backwards or green technology is the enemy or even looked at green technology as a thing for, for a segment. It was looked at as just intelligent and yeah. smart. And the thing that these guys bought into in these towns was what we were saying all along. America 
is scrappy and has good ideas and is innovative, if we get behind the right product, nobody's going to work harder or be more passionate. And that's what these people were looking for. Is you know, what not, if you were on like an Icelandic vehicle? Do you think you would have been the same? I believe sort of we would have perished. It would not have been anything like that. <laughs> it would have um, been different. Yes, yeah, it wouldn't have gone well. And so. you, and and I've seen you with people. I mean, you're you're a person who you can turn someone who is is probably predisposed not to like you and you can turn them and they can love you. And I've seen you do that over and over. Do you think it was you or do you think it was the bikes and the technology or I, I do think it was the bikes. Yeah. I mean and the other thing is it's a motorcycle. You know, yeah. so think about it. It's this two wheeled thing that's always been cool. It, it's it's sort of unassailably cool. So you, right away you're sort of cheating. You yeah. know, you're walking up. It's not a wind turbine. I love the video. A, I don't know where you were, but there was the guy in the construction helmet just Such tearing cool around yeah. Adrian what was going on that you couldn't that was one of these things where you always say like you can't cast that you know yeah. and it's a cliche for a reason because that shit happens and so we were in Adrian Michigan a tiny town we had just come out from meeting the mayor um, and there was a pack of construction workers around the bikes and they were scoffing and one guy had a hard hat and the hard hat was covered with with hardcore moto stickers and yeah. it's like okay this isn't going to be good <laughs> and and so we walked up and we thought well they're going to either make fun of us or or want to fight us and and brian actually diffused everything by saying hey would you guys care to jump on one of these and take a ride and that kind of caught him off guard so the one guy that's got all the moto stickers on yeah. his hard hat says you know what this, eh, thanks not really my thing and his friends are kind of smiling and they're about to start laughing and then brian was just insistent and he said come on you know just spin it around so the guy gets on it is gone for an uncomfortably long amount of time like he's still right it's like yeah. he's, he's never coming back and then when he does come back he, he's like going 60 and you just hear like i'm never bringing it back <laughs> and, and he still had his hard hat on and it was just one of those things where how could you ever have planned yeah. on that you couldn't have cast the guy and you couldn't have made that happen yeah it was really cool that was a cool moment um so, so besides the, the budget, right, there's pretty much no budget. There's actually a, cu- a couple funny things I wanted to show um, on budget. Because uh, this is, this is uh, Steve Capstick. And I don't know if you can make out what that is. But this is our camera rig. This is our cameraman. It's two of those flip cameras put on some sort of steady cam rig that, that he's got, which is fairly pathetic. And, and I like this next picture. Where I don't know what this is, but it's it's more flip cameras. He's got one on the steady cam rig now, and then one on this pole. So, I mean, I think these kind of illustrate the budget that we were dealing with. Um, but besides besides the the budget, you know, if there's one thing you could change about the campaign, you know, what would it be? Well, it's hard to address that in one sense because the campaign determined itself. You know, because we had really no plan. You can't say, well, what would I go back and change about having no plan? Would you plan? have had more of a plan? <laughs> Wait, what, we would have had more resources, and it, and it was more back-end. Like, the, I think what gave this thing an identity and a charm that wouldn't be possible by just spewing up clips was that we had some good edit- editing, and we had some music scoring, and that gave it sort of a nice character. And we couldn't have done that without... We had an editor in the back of a van on Final Cut Pro with dark circles under eyes that literally never stopped editing. I thought he was yeah. going to have a nervous breakdown. Yeah, the and, suitcases were about to fall on him. Like he's in a little like thing, like kind of like this, with suitcases over him, and yeah. you have to like you stick asleep. your head your in. Suitcases. Yeah, all yeah. of our suitcases. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Mike, are you all right? What do you got? You got a cut? No, no. no. But I, I think we would have had more more editing capability, and maybe and a little bit more, you know, back end. Well, what about? What, I, would have I mean, started the the earlier, the, though, the, 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 uh, the the two th- the two things that I thought um, that that we could have done better is one. Once we had followers, we had a lot of um, followers on. I don't think that. I remember giving Bernie a hard time one day because I, lo- I logged on. I'm like, it's been 18 hours since your last tweet, right, you know? Right. And this is like a live thing. This is all about it being live. Yeah. You know? And Bernie, he's, you know, he's got a lot going on. But I thought that was like a place where, yeah. where we, we could have done better. And then I thought the other one, which is just potentially doing some live video. We didn't do any live video. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause my, favorite, my favorite comments were, were I, it feels like I'm there with you guys. Right. And that's... Yeah. You know, that's really cool, and I think we could have pushed further into that. And we, you know, yeah. next time we can do. And I think also if we would have started earlier a little bit, I mean, we started. We put our site up to announce what we were doing. Yeah. What four days before we started, right? So, what? but yeah. I didn't. I don't think any of us realized that the people that were going to follow the trip were going to contribute as much to the trip. So right. how important that was. Like, I don't well, think we also that, we also this was either going to happen this year 
with with this much planning, yeah. or it was going to happen next year with this much planning. Because the weather was just, I mean, the weather was the factor. It was like we had to get on the road. And I don't know about And the funny earlier. thing is we got on the road right when it got super gnarly. <laughs> no, it was bad. You know? I'm not going to, I'd like to, it noted for the record that I'm not participating in this segment because this is all about how we came up short. And, and uh, I'd just rather not say anything. I think that it's, this is sort of fearless Q&A that you're on okay, now. Okay, and So what happens sometimes is you'll actually address some of the stuff because, you, you know, you, you take this fearless thing on. Just when you're on the show. All you right. can go back to being a coward when you're off the show. Is there a slightly uneasy Q and A? Do you remember when you got this the tattoo on your this, on your neck? Yes. Yes. Um, can you see? Um, it's a good story. These well, are, I remember these are the ones it, about just in advertising oh, okay. when you said to me what you said about my ability to sabotage myself. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. I had my first me, myself and Bernie. Uh, we we sold a television campaign. We flew to L.A. It was the first time I had ever sold anything at an advertising agency, much less a, a big TV campaign. We got there, all these giant semis were there, all these people, there was a buffet table, I freaked out, <clears throat> and I ran out and got my hands tattooed, and they say noun and verb, and really I wasn't sure why I was doing it, but I knew I had to get it done that day. <laughs> Later that night I get a call from Alex, he says, I heard what you did today, and I just want you to know, I don't care if you put shit on your face. I'm still going to continue to give you responsibility. You can't get out of it that easy. And, and, and I, I actually think that was on point because I think oh, I yeah, was Oh, yeah, I think of, it was on point. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. pretty sure it was on point. Um, so so uh, another question here. What do you think was the, the uh, bi- biggest success? So, you know, we can get back into your vibe of success. If you look at, and this might sound cheesy but I, I think we all felt this way by the end of this thing this is a democracy we live in you can vote on stuff and the vote the voting affects things but nobody gets to vote on for instance who gets to meet Stephen Chu the Secretary of Energy yeah. the little the little the little happenings within politics are still very political and still very much about power and influence well here's a case where the internet became a true instrument of democracy because it got Craig Bramshaw, the CEO of Bramo, in to a meeting with the Secretary of Energy, the head of the DOA, Stephen Chu. That doesn't happen without this. And yeah. no one gets to vote the, on that. At the White House. So it, to me, the internet became a form of hyper-democracy, and yeah. I think that it just felt that way. It felt like people yeah. had a say, you know? Go, mm-hmm. Going into it, you know, with, like, like, like we'd said, a very loose plan. Hey, it'd be great if, you know, we could get a bike to President Obama. Yeah. Kind of audacious, right? It's a little ridiculous. 100,000 to one, whatever. I don't know yeah. what the odds are. But, but if you could have told me at the beginning, you're going to get, um, you're going to get Bramo in front of uh, the, the uh, Secretary of Energy. Yeah. I would have taken Pretty huge. I would have been really excited. And, right. I, and, and probably the most important meeting that we can get. So, so that, was, that, was, that was a bigger success than I actually had, had hoped for. And that was you the know? part that was weird for me was that we were for the last two or three days when we were in Washington Washington became very real and all of a sudden you realize that it wasn't an ad campaign anymore it was this thing that was kind of bigger there were real meetings with yeah. real senators and, and uh, you know the night before the meeting with Stephen Chu I have these dot White House I have e- White House emails right. that I'm sending images of the trip to these people and it, it just is like well this is above anything that I think any of us yeah. thought yeah. was it, yeah. it just was like well the, this is we do advertising and then there's government stuff and that they sometimes don't really play together and yeah ever. pretty much ever so yeah but the fact that they were and yeah. it, it it influenced it and it's like you know so and so wants images from your trip yeah. send them to this and I'm like you know I'm up all night trying to like okay don't go to sleep like you got to get the images to the White House yeah for the meeting you know so it was that part was crazy I didn't I don't think any of us thought that was going to happen. What I thought would happen is I thought we'd launch the trip, we'd launch the website, you know, and we'd instantly be on the radar of the White House. Yeah. Because, yeah. Be, just because of the content, you know. And mostly, this was, this was a really interesting image that came out of the, the um, trip, mostly on the radar of these guys. I don't know if right. you can see what this pin is, but you could probably tell this story. This was early in the trip, probably just no, that a few was, days the, in, right? The closer... No, that was, that, that was, was two blocks from the White House. Oh, yeah. this was and as we got we closer. We had just okay. Twittered that we were, President Obama, we're two blocks from the White House. Do you want to come and meet us? We're at Starbucks at K and 16th, uh, back to the left, if you want to see us. 
And, and so we what, had already felt like guys were following us for about two days. We kept meeting weird for people. For sure they were fo- guys yeah. were following us. But this, we really... found this on the floor about, about two hours after we were there. It, it, says, it says United States Secret Service, if you can't make it out. So it's, it's, a, it's a lapel pin from the Secret Service that dropped off of a guy. It was just you know, on the ground. Yeah. At, the, at the coffee shop that you guys were It was at. funny because the closer we got to Washington, it was like, that guy's an operative. <laughs> that, why did that guy say it? He came up and talked to you. What did he say? A total operative. And so, yeah, we were... Yeah, we were convinced. I'm sure they probably had no idea we were coming, but maybe. I just want to show this here because the bike just, it's a beautiful, beautiful bike. And, and I, you know, it, it's the only thing out there in, in electric that looks like a proper, proper motorcycle. Yeah. I mean, it really is, it really is beautiful. Yeah, and that's a good, it, that thing won people over just parked. You know what I yeah. mean? You, 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 we would come back to the bikes a lot and there would be a throng of people around them. And they were already fans, you know, and you, you would really have to mess it up to not get them on your side. And then when they found out what you were doing on them, yeah. it was like, where do I sign on? Right. And it's like, well, I'm glad you asked. You can sign the shroud. Yeah, actually, this, is, this, is a, this was one of my favorite parts of the trip. Um, just, I don't know if you can make this out, but we, we, you should tell this story. Um, the idea came from one of the followers uh, who had tweeted in the idea that we should have people um, sign the helmets. Yeah. And we thought, that's really a great idea. And it came from Johannesburg. Johannesburg right? Right? Yeah. It's yeah. A, great, a great example of how connected the thing was to people and how much people had the ability to affect it. And just before this happened, for instance, you know, we were running out of hand warmers, and it was cold and wet. And we get a tweet, hey, the store two blocks from you, I checked, they have hand warmers. And it's from somebody from a different state. This guy in Johannesburg following the trip suggests you should get the bikes painted with, with, um, you know, with Obama's slogan on it. Um, yes, we can. And so... We, you know, well, he said helmets, and we thought, ah, maybe bike would right. be since it's about bike. Well, well that was the part is that when the GPS one, uh, when we activated the GPS, it had been about eight minutes, and I think Steve, who's the camera guy, uh, was like, I want that lake's awesome. What lake is that? And I looked down on the Twitter uh, Twitter feed that was going, and it's like the guys are rounding Lake, you know, where Erie, <laughs> and I was just like, I think it's Erie, yeah. like, you know, and it's like, yeah. and then and then about five minutes after that we pulled over and these guys hands were cold and so i was like well we need we're looking for hand warmers we got to stop because everyone is like why are you paused at this store at this address so it was that was bizarro I thought. So, someone asked uh, bernie to to throw out a peace sign no, do you want to throw I that out did that. i did that did you, you oh, did secretly. all right you just did secretly yeah so so a question what did cpb do for the campaign what did uh uh what what did cpb come up with and contribute how about like i almost got hypothermia that seems like a contribution yeah i felt like i may have gave your mortality like most <laughs> yeah. of your mortality yeah i don't know if that fits in a well we created we created but... we created the 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 original idea um and then um and we were going to go from port we were like hey right from portland yeah and craig said let's do the dc thing yeah which was great and i think made it a lot better um yeah. craig at Brammo. and then uh um, we obviously w- felt that that it, um, it was it was important for for Dave to be on one of the bikes, you know, and that was that was that was a you know a point of contention at the beginning, yeah. And it was something that that actually w- was a point of transparency too, you know, like um, can a marketing guy be in the marketing campaign? Could the yeah. creative director yeah. like be in the advertising? And then how to handle that? Remember that conversation? Well, like how do we how do we <laughs> In this, yeah, right? and it's like don't spin it. Don't and the first it. interview we did, we did a, a news interview in Detroit with the local news, and I said, you know, I'm part of the most deplorable industry on earth. I'm in advertising, <laughs> and the guy, but like, started laughing. But that's in the in the news story. So yeah. yeah, we got that out of the way right away. Yeah. But you can't fake what we did, you know, which is the, it, it wasn't fake. It was real. But I, yeah. I think you're right. It was in the end an ad guy and and uh, a product guy. But I, but I and I thought that was one of the the potentially neat things about the trip is. Um, the the idea that that advertising guys will do different things, and you know, and and whether you're an advertising guy or a marketing guy, but you know, when a marketing guy is out there and he's doing what you just did, I have a totally different feeling than when I watch you know Mad Men or something right, like right, that. Right, right, you know, All right. Well, what was going on here? This is this is uh, that was one of the more tense parts of the uh, the I, whole this deal. This was crazy. There's, there's, I guess if there, if the White House does have a doorbell, it's, it's in some iron bars. It's, in, it's, it's there. extremely That's it. scary. Yeah. There's a bell near here. There's a buzzer. There's a, there's a buzzer. Nobody mm-hmm. rings it. There's a glass Secret Service booth. 
that sits behind it, and there are Secret Service guys in there, and nobody is smiling, and there is there's no way that you think you can go up and ring that thing. And and so we saw like a, somebody that had an appointment in the West Wing go in, and we heard like you know, can I help you? Come out of this ominous speaker, and the guy got buzzed in, and we thought, I guess this is how you would, in effect, ring the doorbell of the White House. So we went, we went up, and and at that point I was like, we're going to get arrested. I had already done the sort of computations of how long until I can get a hold of you. You can bail me out. <laughs> what does this mean long term? I've bailed Dave out of jail, I think, twice now. It's yes, and okay. it's we're not kidding. Which no, it's is not. The sad I'm not part. kidding. Um, anyway, but he's not. He's never done anything like bad. No, it's always dumb. Just stuff. dumb stuff. Anyway, um, so we rang it and we said we have an electric motorcycle for the president. And the loudspeaker comes back on. Stay right there. Do not move. And it's like, okay, their <laughs> guys are going to rappel out of a helicopter and choke us out. And and instead, there was a long wait. We were trying to make jokes with each other because we were terrified. Yeah. And then eventually, the guy came out with a phone number and says, "Call this number." And, and someone's going to come out and talk to you. And, and sure as shit, an, 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 uh, an attache, a nice woman in a business suit, came out like five minutes later and talked to us and eventually returned well, us to that, the bureaucratic vortex that we, were, <laughs> that we were in. But they came out and they yeah. talked to us. That part was really weird, though, because you, you're like, well, I have a phone number. They gave us a real phone number. And so we're like, well, where should we go? Well, across the street. So he sits down across the street, and then and we're just watching Dave talk, and I think Steve's shooting him. And uh, all of a sudden, he's like, Dave just kind of looks up and he's like, uh, blonde hair, long legs, gray suit. Yeah, they're giving me a description. And so he's oh, sitting wow. there, and it was like a like some sort of Grisham thing. It was like, yeah. now we have a person, okay, they're on the move. Yeah. And then he's like, okay, yeah, okay. So, um, okay, I see her. I see her. Okay, I'm walking towards her. Should I just say hi? Yeah. So yeah. it was like, and we're following along, like, what? Now there's another person? Yeah. And you see her walking, this lady just kind of like, and she's looking for us, and just waiting for a black van to screech. Here's yeah. the best part, yeah. though. The exactly. best part is after we do it, and we we were both sort of our heart yeah. beat returns to normal, and we're a few blocks away. There are some uniformed Secret Service guys near the Capitol because they want a high pro- visual presence. Yeah. But they're still Secret Service. It's not like a cop. And he stops and starts looking at the motorcycles because we're still fairly close to the to the White House. And we tell him what they are, and and uh, we tell him what we're there to do. And he says, "Whatever you do." Don't go up and ring that bell. <laughs> and when, and we had just finished doing it, but I could see why he said that because it yeah. was it was touch and go. Certainly, that's pretty good. So, you know, just Bernie saw this in the group of pictures. Yeah, we've all done this. Take a picture of yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> There are a lot of these. Bernie gave me the pictures to go through so I could pick some things, and like most of them were this thing. Yeah, that's right. all I did. <laughs> a lot of that. Two thousand. It was probably seven hundred of those. A lot of that. That was, that, a that was a good one too. This one is. I, I, I was Dave curious about what was going on here. Do you I've, know this? Do you know what was going on here? This is you, right? I think that is somewhere near Adrian. the near the Ohio Michigan border, <laughs> and there were times when. I mean, all of that's us. That's commitment had, right there. That's, <laughs> you know, I was you don't get that from every agency. <laughs> At that point, I was asleep, and uh, there were several times when I was about to fall apart mentally, you know, and I think all of us were. Because, yeah. I mean, here's what we're doing yeah. we're riding. When we're not riding, we're interacting with people, and that part was awesome. It was really cool. When you're not doing that, you're blogging, you're Twittering. When you're not doing that, you're editing, you're, and then yeah. it all starts over again. Well, you're in yeah. three places at one time. You're in the future. Where am I going next? What are we doing? Are we, is there anything going to be there? What's our story? Maybe, but that's a big mess, mystery. There's now, which is publishing. People are writing to us. Yeah. They can follow us. So there's pressure that they literally know where, if I stop to get a sandwich, they know that I stopped to get a sandwich. And they want to know why we're not moving. It's and, so, and so there's that. And then it's like, what happened yesterday? Or what happened, you know, do we have the edits? Do we have the thing? Yeah. We, or we're managing that. So yeah. it's like where our heads are in three places at one time. So whenever we would have a second to sleep, that's... It's if you li- could sit it's anywhere, live you were... creative direction. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. And curation of the event. Yeah. yeah. And no one's prepared for it. We, uh, we were very ill-prepared for that. Ill, Ill-prepared. <laughs> yes. Ill- but, I mean, so what? that was a question that's come in a bit. Is like, so if this is something that happens, if this is, you know, if there be other um, advertising like this, what is the creative director like, you know? What is that role like? 
It's a good question. I mean, I think you have to know who, what, who, who you are and what you're saying because that dictates everything. And that determines what happens with people and what your position is when you're talking to people. Yeah. And that becomes the brief, and the brief never goes away. You know? yeah. So without that, I wouldn't know what you would do. But it, so we had a very good idea of this is who we are, this is what we're doing, this is what we hope happens. If that's tight, then you can do it. If that's nebulous, you're hosed. I don't, I don't know how you would do it. Well, and and so, we spent like you know we spent probably what, a week and a half with the client passing over documents before yeah. and like kind of saying who we were yeah. and who we weren't so that yeah. we all knew because you don't have a chance but to it was it all wrong. but it was and yeah. it was all driving towards just like making it really transparent and making it really authentic right yeah, yeah. so I, I think that the thing that that's really hard you know potentially hard to adjust to for clients and 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 creatives and and agencies is. There's always the stuff you'll talk about and the stuff you won't talk about. Yeah, you know, and like when the when the bike broke, that was a moment of uh, this is in the camp of stuff you don't talk about. Yeah, and then yeah, you know, I sent you an email because I was like, yeah. uh, what do we yeah. do? Yeah, yeah, you were this, like, this yeah. is hey. okay. This is <laughs> kind yeah. of one of the things we might not talk about yeah. sometimes, but yeah. in this case, it doesn't seem a, well. The, doesn't uh, seem like that's a rule anymore. The know? other thing is, it was organic and it got bigger. And and I think if we like you said in the beginning, we had hopes, but our hopes were eclipsed by what really happened and so you had to allow it to get bigger like it started out as a way to to you know promote a a very cool electric vehicle and 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 to some extent the ev category in general it ended up as this anthemic thing about american you know um innovation and american passion and the american ability to to succeed in the new green economy i mean that that stuff just yeah. happened as it went and it didn't it wasn't like we invented it it just right. is what it was what happened as people right. became fans and we went through those towns with with out of work workers and all that stuff yeah. happened you know yeah and two wheel vehicles have a certain um, that this was something that we wanted to overcome too two wheel vehicles get discounted in terms of transportation, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, there's in, in terms of uh, what's going on at, um, in in DC um, and in government. There's funding going to pretty, you know, pretty much all the electric four wheeled vehicles, yep. right? Yeah. They're all getting government um, uh, support, and and two wheel, three wheel, it's it's not it's not considered uh, um, important enough at this point. And I don't think that's really accurate. I, I think that, that two wheels and commuting on two wheels has to become part of the picture yep. uh, and, and, and is, a, is an important part of the picture because if we all drive EVs and we're still all stuck in the same traffic, right. like, that mm-hmm. ain't great. Look yeah, at Asia. Know? Look at Europe. You know, two wheels is more sustainable because there's less materials required to build the thing, and it takes up less space. So you know, beyond just the, the fuel source issues, there's other things that, that it's, it's good about. Yeah. There's two, two good questions. Uh, where is the bike now, um, and why didn't you leave it with the Secretary of Energy? Well, there wasn't an opportunity at the time to leave it with the Secretary of Energy, and it would have meant probably being shot by a sniper. I mean, they're pretty serious about it. So when Craig came out of his meeting, he wasn't allowed to bring the bike in. And you can understand, it's a pretty complicated device. So yeah. how do you know what's in it? They you have, have to, to dunk s- it in water <laughs> yeah, for a yeah, month. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 So yeah, that wasn't going to happen. Then dismantle it. Yeah. Then x-ray it. As far as the bike goes, you know, me and Brian's answer to this thing was, let's lock this thing. Actually, the first thing we wanted to do was find another guy named Obama, which I think was your (laughs) idea, which is pretty hot. And we found a David Obama, and the thing was going to be like, hey, we came to give this thing to a guy named Obama. And damn it. And we're doing it. And also, it would have been cool to just show up at a guy's house and go all publisher's clearinghouse on him. You know, And he (laughs) would have to, and 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 the idea was that David Obama would have to agree that if, if President Obama ever wanted it, he'd give it up. Right, yeah. right. That was, was going to be part. That was going to be part of the deal. But there was no. Da- it turned out that a David Obama was a fake name of some sort of fraud scheme where you give Obama's relative money, and it was all. There was no David Obama. So not a good. No not Obama. A good not a good solution. No Obama in Maryland. Yeah. No Obama in Virginia. Nothing. So then we thought, well, okay, we'll lock it up and we'll put the keys in the mail and really mail them to him. So that, what we did was we locked it to a street corner yeah. in front of Bramo's PR agency. They yeah. have a huge PR agency. Yeah. Locked it to a pole. Sandwick. Put, uh, put, Weber, uh, Shandwick. Weber, Weber Sandwick. Sandwick. Weber Sandwick. Weber Sandwick. Weber Sandwick. Sorry. Weber Sandwick. So we put the real ignition Even. key and the real lock key in the mail with the letter, with directions on how to get there, and mailed it. That's, that's sort of the way we rolled on everything. That was the, that was the answer, it felt like. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and, and it was there for an indeterminate amount of time. It, when we left, it was there. I don't know how long it was there. But you didn't but, take both the keys. No. One key got mailed. There was a spare key for both bikes. And so one key got mailed. There was a spare. And I think ultimately, the where we have one approach... I would have rolled the spare into, the, into a sewer. <laughs> I mean, that's just... Well, they, from what I understand, you know, like, we thought... Maybe our approach was charming. We think the PR company, we know the PR company has it. We think that they unlocked it or... Right. Like, and, it, and I think And they, they have it. And the good news is, in terms of, like, the Secretary of Energy, now, you know, the, 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 the work is being done to do the paperwork, to do the dunking and dismantling, to get it into the lobby of the Secretary of, or of the uh, Department the of Energy. Yeah. And we went in there. So, it, so that could be yeah. very cool, and, and hopefully that's going to happen. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, a more professional and methodical approach than yeah, we had. No. And Our, I think it might actually work. What, what, what I thought is if we lock it there, obviously Obama's not going to roll up and unlock it and go, this is awesome. But, um, but Secret Service will come. Yes. And they will dismantle it. And at least at some point he may have the option to call us up and we could put it back together for yes. him. And, and, it, and he could have one. But anyway, th- there is a much more profe- professional uh, approach being taken now Yes. Um, by, by uh, people in the PR community. We still think when the White House gets mail and there's metal in it and there's keys. It, well, it doesn't go to the White House. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. still thinking there's like... We're all person. on a bunch of watch lists. I mean, <laughs> right, right. Like, so, you know, I'm sure that I'm going through the extra scanner from now on at the airport. <laughs> yeah, the air puffer. The puffer. puffer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're totally that's, going. That's the my puffer. destiny. The um, another good good question. The uh, is there a crowdsourcing opportunity for a documentary? I mean, we have a lot of stuff. There are a lot I, of great footage that no one's seen before. Yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of the stuff that we had. There's a lot of dialogue in it because we were trying to get points across and we were yeah. trying to trying to get momentum going. You mean the stuff that's on the site? The stuff that's on the site. Yeah. The video. But there's so much gorgeous stuff that Capstick shot, and that that is. You know, our DP, that's just beautiful stuff, you know, and that you could put, you could build something that had air in it and and still, uh, you know, functioned as an important thing and had a message, but, you know, was delivered in less of a a frenetic way, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, what have you, you've talked about maybe putting the assets out there, right? Yeah, I don't know how you would do it, but I guess you could put, you know, you create some sort of site where where people can download the assets and, and, um, you know, put something together. I mean, obviously, you'd get multiple cuts. Versions, yeah. Yeah, and then might be something interesting to do with that. I was skeptical that we would have the kind of content that would make a cool movie yeah. before we set out. And yeah. when we got back, I think it could be cool And, and if you edited whole, me out. I mean, the whole, the whole campaign took, basically, there was no budget. And in place of budget, what you had was people getting involved, right? Yeah. I mean, it was powered by, and we said at the beginning, you know, the campaign will run on the, the, kindness, of the kindness of America. Yeah. Right? It's a little addy, but, yeah. but it was pretty much true. And that's, it was 100% and, and it's still, true. And it's still true. I mean, you know, if we could, if we could create something out of, the, out of the footage, that would still, still be true. Yeah. Yep. You know? Well, and the question about crowdsourcing and edit, I think one of the things maybe people don't realize is the entire thing in a sense, was crowdsourced because our itinerary was determined by people through the site telling us where we could go, where we could get what we needed, where we could sleep, where we could charge. So, yeah. And that became the content. Yeah. So all of that was from people, not us sitting back saying, where do we want to go next? So what's the, what's the single, the single um, act of kindness that stands out the most to you? Is there one? There was, I mean, you know what? There, there were so many, and people would let us. I'll, I'll give you one that was odd. We stopped okay, at yeah. we stopped at a little town called Paw Paw, West Virginia. I think there was probably two hundred people in the town, but there you was not supposed to be in West Virginia. No, we weren't, and we had to. That's just how far can we get on a truck? Where do we go next? So we stopped there, and the only business that was open was a gas station, and. Here you are with a product that is designed to eliminate their business model. And we walk up and explain this is an electric motorcycle. Not only did they let us charge, they let us wheel it inside the gas station and plug it in, you know, inside where it was sort of in the way and people had to crawl around it to go pay for their gas. And wow. and, and that was really cool. They just, at no yeah. point did they say, well, you know, 
And how many people, like how much was it, it charges like 35 cents or 13, it, how much is it charge? About 30 cents. Something cents yeah. We estimated uh, the, 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 the total mileage for the trip was 715 miles or so, yeah. and, and it was $4.67 per bike. So we came in under budget because we had budgeted five, five bucks. bucks. <laughs> yeah. and, and if you so contrast good. that with you know, the, the core... We the, never come in under budget. That's awesome. <laughs> well, and the CEO... You guys never come in under budget. No, we've the, spent yeah. lots of money before... <laughs> The, the CEOs that flew there in 2008 on on Lear jets, it was estimated that their trips were twenty thousand dollars. You know, and, per. and so right per guy. Yeah. So we, I feel like we we contrasted with that, you know, Beautiful. heavily. Yes. Yeah. This uh, this kind of illustrates the whole bringing the bikes. I don't know if you can see the Bramo in there though. Yeah. It looks like you're in a laundry. It, it was an awesome. That was Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. This is how glamorous advertising <laughs> could become. You know what you're not change. seeing in there? I'm yeah. not kidding. There were two grave diggers washing their <laughs> jumpsuits. They had these soil-covered jumpsuits, and they were in there washing their jumpsuits. But the cool thing about well, that what was... If, what if advertising becomes this? You know, I mean, like, you guys, you're at the Mondrian in L.A. <laughs> for a shoot for Coke, and it's pretty good, yeah. maybe, yeah. you know? What if it becomes... What if, you're, what if it's swapped, and instead of that being, like, you know, 90% of what you did... This was 90% of what you did. I feel like we would be cool with it. I think you viewers can see out there that you're not dealing with a classy combination here. But I don't know. Some people may miss the ceviche, you know? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, speaking for us, I think we'd be cool with it. So it's not for everybody. It's you maybe know, not, for it's everyone. not for everybody. Or it may be just a little bit more of a transition for some. Yeah. This was a, this was a photo that, um, that just surprised me. Part of the trip. What yeah. is that? That was at Harry's Harry's place. Oh, Henry's Harry's place. place. Okay. There was a casino mm. thing in the back, and I'm gonna I snuck around an old lady to take a picture of it. Yeah, Bernie wanted to get the picture of the hot chick off the video. The digital hot chick. The digital chick. hot yeah. chick. <laughs> yet there was this older woman running plane, the plane soft, or something yeah. like nearby. I guess. So I was kind of like. <laughs> it was just kind of awkward. Because I had about a I nine guess. second window to get it before the stuff it went away. So I had to cycle through two or three times. A anyway. couple, couple things just about the bike. I thought this was a really cool illustration yeah. of, of just um, a contrast to what we're all used to. Yep. You know? um, and this is off the dash of a Brahma, I guess, right? Yep. And that is essentially your, your fuel gauge, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> you, at least that main part there, battery level. And, and what, you know, when, when, you're, when you're riding the thing... What was it? What was the top speed that you? Seventy got? miles an hour, and and they're pretty cool. I got Brambo's cool about their claims, you know, because they claim Cause they say fifty. Right? They claim forty-two, forty-three mi- miles is your range. We got yeah. fifty. Yeah. They claim like sixty plus. We w- easily went seventy. Yeah. So I mean, the bikes are legit motorcycles. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Um, no, I've ridden them. They're pretty like they're they're pretty quick. Yeah. An electric engine is pretty quick, and it can be tuned to be quicker, but it's yeah. it pulls pretty good. I would say it's like. You know, really torquey, like in the like hills. Three fifty, or well, torqueier than a three fifty yeah. would be. The, and we went through everything. We went through rain. People think electricity and rain maybe not a good mix. And I know that it's not a good mix. Four days straight of of solid rain. Yeah. Then we had to go through the Alleghenies. So we're going up and down through the mountains, and people are probably wondering, okay, it's it's electric. It's it's going to be yeah. the little engine that could. I mean, those things flew torque. up the mountains because yeah. of the torque. Kind of crazy. <clears throat> a lot of yeah. torque. Yeah. The van that we were in behind was just kind of like slowly dying off as they would kind of keep going it didn't make any yeah. sense really. i don't think people realize how good electric engines are in terms yeah. of torque and and uh and I, you know i've ridden the, the bike a little bit yeah and it's a legit motorcycle yeah it's not it's not a scooter no but it's also the the funny thing about it is you ride it and it's and it's a great bike but you had the best comment because we have a, we we have you know other other motorcycles and um and you you uh have that 950 yeah and you had the best comment. We had gotten back from riding the Brahmos for a bunch, you know, a bunch of time. And, yeah. And tell that story. Well, it, it was the first time we had an opportunity to, to see the bike. And the Brahmo guys brought one here to Boulder. We rode it around. Uh, and it, it, it's silent and smooth and fast and, and design-oriented and just so forward Super thing. low yeah. um, um, center of gravity. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you ride it, you know, you whip by silently and people's heads whip around and you feel sort of like Captain Kirk. Well, then I go to go home and I jump on my, my 950 and I, it was like riding a steam locomotive, you know, just with gears and the sounds it was making and the smell. It feels and, so primitive yeah. to get on a regular motorcycle. Like, 
Yeah. If I had, like, it felt like it, it felt like, like, like that, I should right? have been wearing like Oshkosh coveralls and giant leather gloves. And yeah, I didn't have that, but yeah. had I had it, I would have donned it. Yeah. And the, I just, you know, I love this start button on the yeah. bike. You can go in a little tighter, maybe, and get that. You know, that's it. And it's got. We, we we help design the the startup sound yeah. too, which yep. has been you know fun to get involved in some of the the product stuff. Yeah, well, people would freak out when you would push that and hear a sound that's you know uh, analogous to say an Apple laptop firing up or a yeah. Microsoft laptop, <laughs> r- 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 right? Yeah. And and then it would that's the only sound it makes, and then there's no sound, and so they would say, well, is it on? And they don't realize you're now idling. You know, after yeah. you've pushed that button, it's idling, but there's like little yeah. kids standing around you, and you know, it, yeah. it, it's very inviting technology. And, it, and, and that's the thing that I've seen is when we have the bike here, people who I know would not get on a motorcycle, although this is a motorcycle, it's got yeah. the power, uh, you know, and it's, everything about it's a motorcycle except the intimidation. So people that would never ride a motorcycle will get on get on this thing. Wait, we're doing an interstitial commercial, I guess. You got to work for that twenty bucks. It's not just the real Coke taste; it's got zero calories. It's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> anyway, the uh, one of the questions that came in was was about Bramo did a race with the bike. And are they going to go back? Isle of Man. They did Isle of Man. Yep. yep. They just wanted to, you know, kind of shake out the technology. Well, the cool thing, they raced at the Isle of Man, which for people don't, that don't know is a time trial. And it's, it's widely regarded as one of the craziest races because they ride through towns. So instead of hay bales, you go through like an apartment complex if you, if you don't make a corner. Yeah. But it's, it's a or very competitive, walls. yeah, stone walls. So they went over there and they had an electric vehicle category this year. And all the other electric bikes in the race were these crazy Frankenstein things that were one-off bikes where people had piled 8 million batteries into this thing that could like ignite and cause a plasma fire or whatever it is. Brambo went over there with what is essentially a slightly more performance-oriented version of their of their production bike, and they ended up getting third place. Their goal was to finish. They ended up getting third, and that the bike's top speed is close to 100 miles an hour, and it will go, I believe, around 100 miles. And it's it's strictly the batteries, you know. So they could put those batteries in the production bike tomorrow. It would just increase the cost, but right. it's coming. You know, yeah. the battery technology, the technology is coming. coming, and they've said that they. They try to keep the bike battery agnostic because there's a war right now, and all these companies are rushing to make the best battery. And when people start doing that, and the and the technology gets there, they, you can just, you know, insert. Yeah, the, the way new they've batteries. designed the the bike, that that frame member is really where the the batteries are bolted on. So yeah. they've designed it so it's easy to upgrade. As that new battery technology comes on, you can just bolt it in into your into your frame. Yep. Yeah. And he, and it was interesting when we were in Detroit. Um, Detroit lawmakers have said we want Detroit to be the battery capital of the world. So mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's it's not just Asia. You know, this is going to be a U.S. push, and and hopefully yeah. we're making great batteries too. Yeah. You know. um, what is the, you know, just in terms of how glamorous this trip was, um, we did a little crowds um, or a little couch surfing yes. to save money. Yes, we and, did. And you had a pretty good story. I don't know about if can, spending. It, yeah, it's yeah. probably if if, you, if there are any kids watching, probably time to kind of you know That's tune out. Yeah. Um, I'll try to sanitize it. I mean, overall the couch surfing was. I'm not a big couch surfing guy. I'll just go out. You've and never say done that. it. No, and I like to have my space. And yeah. and I my thing with other people's homes is not that I'm going to care about the decor or I'm going to judge. They smell funny. They smell weird, and it's not a bad they smell. smell. Like them. It's yeah. it's a them smell yeah. exactly. So everyone's house has their it's, it's their smell, and it can only be created by the whatever. So yeah. we we had we couch surfed a, a bunch of different times, and and uh, there was one time we got into Washington, and we were staying with uh, a guy who's the vice president of the Electric Vehicle Association of Washington. Super cool guy. He's also an attorney with the EPA for air pollution enforcement. So yeah. like solid dude, yeah. but. You know his his sense of humor was a little um, it was a little uh, unusual, and he uh, he tended to tell jokes that were um, that were sexual organ related, <laughs> and and but the part that was a little weird was he would he would go into one of these and he would romance the front of the joke and he's talking about the you know you're yeah. talking about someone's nether region for a really long time and then it sort of just trailed off there was no punchline you know there was i mean so it almost wasn't a joke it was just sort of a weird 
X-rated freestyle. And we were subjected to one of those in his basement, and it was just myself and him and Brian. And it was it was an unusual moment. It was a moment I wished I had was in a Motel Six, but we got through it. And in the end, the guy was awesome. And where was Bernie? Like, where's the crew? Uh, the well, crew. Yeah. I stayed one night. Yeah, yeah. Bernie did suck it up, and and uh, and crowd. Or uh, couch, couch surf was just one night. Yeah. The, I mean, the next night there wasn't even enough room for you at that house. Well, even the night, the you night that you crowd, or the night that you I couch surf, the up bed. there was a huge pull-up yeah. bed, and it was like it looked we pretty good. We could have shared. I, I mean, at this point, you know, we spend a lot of budget um, putting people up in hotels. You know, we talked yeah. about the Mondrian, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, and and uh, and shutters. Maybe you've yeah. probably been to shutters. Yeah. yeah. It's probably totally fine with you guys if we just go one room i could just talk to travel and it's like just one room for you to share because it's still an upgrade coming out of this trip right that's yeah. my background though when you hired me out of schwinn that's well i mean it was all like that back in the we day. were on the way to yeah. the w and i asked dave yeah. rolf who am i rooming with yeah and he was like what are you talking about <laughs> and and he i was we all get our own room so i ran home and called steve and anyway yes uh it i don't somebody's know. watching from thirty-five thousand feet on a flight how about a power source on board? Oh, is he suggesting they should have? That's a great idea. Uh, yeah. It would be great to plug in your laptop or, or to be able to do that. And that was the thing about our trip is you're surrounded by electricity, even on this plane. There's obviously electricity. So your fuel source is ubiquitous, yeah. but you don't necessarily have the right or, or the social normalcy to go up and ask for it. it yeah. And, and, and well, it is, it is, it's everywhere. Yeah. Like, Electricity and and this bike doesn't have like some crazy two ten no. plug or something. It's just a it regular goes into plug. A wall out people complain about infrastructure, right? So yeah. we're we're in Sebring, Ohio, which is not a very big town. People who say that we can't move to electric say there's no infrastructure. Well, right. But yeah. there is an infrastructure for to to plug in the Christmas tree lights on Main Street, right? right. So a little town like Sebring, Ohio, right. has figured out how to make sure there's a plug by every tree right. that's at every parking yeah. spot. You know, coincidentally. Yeah throughout this little town. Probably not hard to convert that. Probably not. Probably, Probably yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. And it was cool because while we were you I'm know, no on the trip. I'm no electrical engineer. There was people on the trip that were, you know, we started a conversation <laughs> on the trip where people started uh, talking about different ideas for infrastructure. Like, you know, uh, the, should the parking meter poles have plugs in them? Yeah. Like what company yeah. would make that? Who could make that? Like, yeah. And so I think there was a kind of a good brainstorming session. There are companies making it. I mean, yeah. I've seen that, it, that it's coming. But it's interesting, you know, the idea that a city could just, you know, Tomorrow. Provide it. Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to do it for the Christmas or lights, or like they, privatize yeah. it, Holiday put ads, lights. make it outdoor advertising. Oh but God! Then it's, <laughs> I know, I know. Why did he <laughs> got to turn it into outdoor advertising? I know. I'm sorry. That was the thing. We were in the Capitol, and we were walking around looking at all of these buildings on the mall. And I thought, why is this so idyllic? And and it almost reminded me of those sci-fi movies when you see people in a utopian society and no one needs money anymore and everyone's in a toga yeah. and I thought why is it so awesome and then it's because it was in complete lack of outdoor advertising yeah. and yeah. then I realized that I was part of the problem I was a poisonous cancerous person that was contributing to this horrible problem that I felt bad for like 20 minutes but you're okay now? I'm better way better yeah someone asked it, um how much electricity does it take to charge? Is it like running a hair dryer for an hour? Well, I don't. Do we have any, uh, you know, analogies? Well, like that's that? what you bring in this really complicated modern. It looks big. It looks like it's going to short out everything in your house, <laughs> and like all the lights will dim. And then people, actually, a, a lot of people would let us plug in, and then a ask us afterwards. Like the woman at the laundromat asked us afterwards. By the way, about how much did that cost? Which I thought was so cool because yeah. obviously this wasn't a, a business that was on fire. Right, you know, it's a laundromat. right? Yeah. And it, it turns out that it's about th it draws about 30 cents worth of electricity for a full charge. It takes uh, three and a half to four hours to charge. So it. what? So, but how does that compare to a hair dryer? Like, yeah. I don't know. I Do don't we know? know? It's I probably don't a good thing to know. find out. Yeah, yeah. Good thing yeah. Find yeah. Out. Like toasters, I think use a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd the be part, pretty cool if it's like making six pieces of toast. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Something the part like that, that was weird also was that people actually let it roll in. I mean, it's like bringing your shoes in. You know, because no, it doesn't. No, you had it in every picture that was in a. And it was weird, yeah. but it was their idea all the time. Oh, really? Sometimes, yeah. It was like, yeah, just bring it in, and you're like, really? It's a motorcycle. But it's quiet. It doesn't drip oil. It doesn't have exhaust fumes. Right. And it so it was interesting how it worked. It's almost into, like a bike. Yeah. Like once it's not once it's not going seventy miles an hour or sixty miles, it's a bicycle, yeah. right? You just roll it in, or at your apartment, you can just pull it into the, you know basement floor or, yeah. the, or the downstairs floor and just plug and, it and in. plug it in we're at it we're out of time pretty much so really? um 
Yeah, that went by. This you guys was the did best a, show ever. You guys did a well. We'll see. I we'll haven't see. seen the other ones, but I we don't. don't need we to. don't decide. People decide whether it was a good show or not. But I, I had fun. Me I had too. a lot. I had a lot of fun. I have to. I Next, downed two bottles of water, and I have to go to the you, bathroom. It's the movie. show that's long <laughs> enough where you have to pee during the I show. Have to pee so bad. The, no commercial breaks. And, yeah. and well, thanks for having us um, on your mini train wreck. It was a pleasure. Always yes, good. Always fun. good. We're gonna have Tiffany Cosell on next week. We might have to do it Wednesday, I think. Um, and Tiffany uh, wants to talk about portfolios. So I'm gonna look for my first portfolio uh, before I got into before I actually got I a job. Like to see I, that. I think I, it's so bad, <laughs> and I think I, I think I know where it is. Tiffany's gonna bring in hers. We're gonna get a bunch of other portfolios, and and that should be a lot of fun too. So um, thank you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. <laughs>